everyone. Welcome back to EdTech Classroom. I'm so happy you're here. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Maddie. I'm an EdTech coach and K-5 STEM teacher in Los Angeles. I post weekly tech tutorials and videos for teachers. And like I said, I'm so happy that you found my video today. So for today's video, we're going to be talking about how to create mini maker spaces. So I am the host of a podcast called the EdTech Classroom Podcast. And one of my favorite topics to talk about on this podcast, and it's really been lately at least, one of the most highly requested topics for my podcast is how to create a mini maker space. So today's video is going to be about exactly that. I'm gonna walk you through the process of creating a mini maker space. If you're a parent watching, this is something that you can do with your children at home, or if you're a teacher, this is a great idea for you to implement whether you're teaching in person, you're teaching remote, or sort of a hybrid of the two. So what we're going to be doing today is basically we're going to be learning how to create maker spaces in a box. So basically the way it works is we're going to be gathering a bunch of different materials from recyclable materials to low cost items that you can find at a place like Target or the dollar store. We're going to be combining it all together and I'm going to give you some recommendations for STEM activities that you can do with your students or with your children. So the first stop on our list is we're going to check out Target. Now one huge misconception about maker spaces is that they have to cost a lot of money. You know, I think when people hear the term maker space, they think of 3D printers, laser cutters, all that jazz and stuff that's really expensive. And while these high tech tools, of course, are really awesome if you have the budget for it, you can still incorporate STEM activities in your classroom on a very low budget, you know? So really the focus of today's video is not only gonna be how to create a makerspace, but really how to create a budget-friendly makerspace. So again, we're gonna be looking at recyclable materials, extremely low-cost materials. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna head to Target, and I will see you guys there. Everybody, we just got back from Target and I think the biggest thing that I realized while I was there is that I actually didn't need to buy anything. I actually didn't need to buy anything. Yeah! Target kind of can add up, right? So when we're looking at all these maker materials, these art supplies, all of these costs can start to add up. Even something like a $3 bin, for example, for a student to put their materials in, that adds up when you think about having, you know, 24 students in your class. So when I came home, what I decided to do was gather up a bunch of recyclable materials that I thought could sort of act as a replacement for some of the things that I might find at Target. So I have this box here that I went ahead and filled up with some different maker materials. Um, what I love about the idea of each student having their own cardboard box is I think it really allows them to have ownership over their maker materials. So right now in this 2020-2021 school year, when we're thinking about, you know, all these social distancing measures in place, for example, students really need to have their own set of materials. Now I know in a lot of ways, the idea of a maker space is that kids are able to collaborate, share materials. So what I love about this box is it kind of acts as a fun storage container for students to keep their materials in. And it's better for the environment than a plastic bin. And of course it would save you, the teacher, a lot of money. So if we take a look at the things I have inside here, I sort of have a fun mix between recyclable materials and really low cost items. So like I said, I actually didn't buy anything while I was at Target because I realized I kind of had everything I already needed. Um, but there might be some things that you might want to check out from, you know, maker materials that you might want to buy at a place like Target or the dollar store. So if we take a look here, I'm gonna show you some of the materials that I have in my mini maker space. Now what you see here is what I would give to one child in my class. 
So for example, if you have 24 students in your class, you'd want to have 24 different boxes filled with materials like these. Now, if you're a parent, of course, you might want to have one for each child in your home. All right, so of course we have some fun red solo cups. I thought that these could be really helpful for something like building. So I have three red solo cups in my mini maker space here. I also have some coffee filters. When thinking about, you know, doing parachute challenges, for example, with students, I think that coffee filters can be a really great uh, tool to use. So I have these as well. Another great tool for building, um, you know, Legos are awesome. As a STEM teacher, I really love Legos, but that's something that's definitely really expensive. So I thought that a fun replacement for Legos, this is kind of some outside of the box thinking here, but I got a deck of playing cards that I found. The deck is actually, it's not even a complete deck, which is why I decided to put it in this box here. But again, I thought that cards could sort of be a fun building activity for students. So I have a deck of cards here. I also have some paper plates. Um, I really like using paper plates in general for maker activities. I think that, you know, these are something that a lot of people have around the home. So I thought that this could be something great to include as well. Now I have an egg carton. Um, so I actually had eggs for breakfast and finished a carton today. So I decided that this could maybe be something fun to put in my box. There's sort of a bunch of different creative things that kids can do with this. You know, they can cut it up. They can, you know, do a bunch of different things. So I just have an empty egg carton here that I thought could be a fun maker material. Now some more things that I have, these are kind of like the classic thing when you think of, when you think of doing maker activities at home. I have these three paper towel tubes. You could also use uh, toilet paper rolls, but I really like these because I think that they can be really great for kids who are doing, you know, building slides or wanting to do any sort of really building. I think these can be a really great tool to use. All right, next I have some modeling clay. So I actually got this from Target in the dollar section um, over the summer, so a few months ago. This cost me $3 from Target and it's a modeling clay that has a bunch of different colors in it. So this might be an example of something that you might want to actually purchase. What I really like about modeling clay is it allows students to actually build a prototype. Um, so prototyping is obviously something that's really important in STEM, really important in doing you know, maker challenges. So I like to use modeling clay for students to actually build their first model or their first STEM build. They can kind of like create their idea using this modeling clay and then they can use their other maker materials later on to actually make the final version. So modeling clay can have a lot of really great uh, practical applications in STEM and maker challenges. Next we have, let's see, so many fun things left. <laughs> Next we have these pom-pom balls. So kids love pom-pom balls. If you're a STEM teacher or, or just an elementary school teacher in general, you might notice that kids really, really love to use pom-pom balls. I just wanted to bring some color into my mini maker space. So what I did was I actually found an old um, gift bag that I had and I just cut off the pom-pom balls from that. So you actually don't need to go out and purchase any pom-pom balls. Think outside of the box here. There's so many really great things that you can find around your home that you can incorporate. So again, I got these fun pom-pom balls. All right, next we have popsicle sticks. So popsicle sticks are again, another really great building tool. If you've ever done a maker challenge with your students, you probably have noticed that they can build some really, really creative things out of popsicle sticks. So if you're a big popsicle eater, you could of course use those, but these are actually something that I purchased again from Target over the summer. So this is um, just one other thing that you could possibly add to your mini maker space. All right, next here we have some scissors. So of course scissors is again, something that you would wanna purchase, uh, but when you're doing maker challenges, you're gonna need a pair of scissors and you're also gonna need some tape. So two things that I happen to have at my home, but these are some things that you might wanna purchase if you do not have tape or scissors. All right, two more things here. So next I have a bunch of crayons. Now I just threw these crayons in here loosely. Um, so I just put a handful of crayons that I thought I could use. Ooh, they're falling everywhere handful of crayons that I thought could be uh, great for, you know, drawing out some ideas. So these crayons here. And then the last thing I found is some string. So when you have a maker space, you always wanna make sure that you have something that you can use to tie. So really you need to have t things that you can tie with, tape, something sticky, glue, etc. So I found this string just 
somewhere. I'm not really sure what it belongs to. It looks like maybe it might have been on a, a bag or something, but I did find some string. Um, of course, if you have longer string, you could use that. If you don't have string at your home, you could also look into using something like dental floss. Um, so of course, floss might cost more than string, but if you're not looking to go out and purchase anything, that could be a nice alternative. All right, so that's everything that I have in my mini maker space here. It might not seem like a lot, but I'm gonna give you guys some different ideas of things that you can actually create and build with your students using the items that you found in my mini maker space here. So the idea of a mini maker space is something that works really, really well if you're doing distance learning right now. Now I know that schools across the country are doing a bunch of different things. You know, we have schools that are learning 100% in person, 100% online, some sort of hybrid of the two. So I do know that every school is different and every classroom is different as well. But I think that this is a really great idea for something that you can do during a period of distance learning when kids are actually learning from home. You can create some sort of scavenger hunt, for example, where kids can go around the house and try and collect different materials like this. I actually have a really fun at home learning scavenger hunt where kids can create their own mini maker space. So I'll be sure to have that linked in the episode description down below. So I'm also going to have an image overlay right here where you can actually see an example of what kids might have on their scavenger hunt sheet. All right. So again, like I said, I think this is a really great example of how you can have maker activities at home when kids are learning in distance learning. I do think this idea works really well in the classroom in a normal, typical school year. The idea of having a mini maker space, like I said, really allows students to have agency over their materials. Uh, it can make it so that they can basically store something like this, store this box that I showed you guys underneath their seat, under their desk, and it can be something that they pull out when it's time to work on different maker challenges. Now, I'm not saying that teachers need to go out and buy 24 cartons of eggs. That would be ridiculous unless you really like eggs. But I just really gave this example here so that you guys can kind of understand how you can gather different recyclable materials. So for example, something that you could do with your students is you could actually send a letter home and ask each student to bring their own box to school. And so instead of you going out and buying plastic bins, each child in your class could have their own cardboard box to keep their materials in. So I finished building this bridge. I'm super excited about it. I used uh, a bunch of different maker materials from my mini maker space. So I used paper towel tubes. I used a red solo cup. I used popsicle sticks, tape, uh, some of the deck of cards, and I used some string. So I only used one material that wasn't in my mini maker space, and that is a hole punch. And as I was building this, I thought of a couple of other recyclable materials that you might want to include. It might be a good idea to include rubber bands or hair ties. It might be a good idea to include tin foil or saran wrap. Uh, and I also came up with a few ideas of things that your students could actually make using the exact materials that I have in my mini maker space. So of course, in this example here, I made a bridge. You'll see that I actually made a drawbridge that I'm pretty excited about. So you'll see that it just plops open like that. Uh, but your students, in addition to making a bridge, they could also make a tower. They could make a water slide or a regular slide. I really like doing uh, the playground challenge with my students where basically they're given uh, maker materials and they have to make their dream playground. So there's, those are just a couple of ideas that I came up with that your students could try out using the maker materials that are in their mini maker space. 
All right, so hopefully this video is helpful in allowing you to come up and brainstorm some ideas for how you can actually incorporate recyclable materials into your classroom. Now, again, I know that every classroom is different. You know, I know some schools have access to more recyclable materials or maker materials than others. But the point that I'm really trying to make with this video is that you don't have to go out and buy a bunch of fancy things in order to have a successful maker space in your classroom. It's really important that we think outside the box and try and find really low cost or recyclable materials that we can use with our students. So if you liked this video, be sure to subscribe, give me a thumbs up. I post weekly tech tutorials for teachers and fun other videos like this one. You can also check out my podcast, the EdTech Classroom Podcast, if you do want to learn more about maker spaces. My podcast is really a place where I talk a lot about project-based learning and give a lot of ideas related to creating a maker space in your classroom. So again, if that's something that you want to learn more about, I'd recommend checking out my podcast, the EdTech Classroom Podcast. You can find it on Apple and Spotify and really wherever you like to listen to your favorite podcast. So again, thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you back here soon. Bye friends.